Hello VC. Um, hope everyone is good. Um, it's been a long, long week. I didn't get too much time to dig for records, but I managed to to do some on Friday, and um, and I got one record in the mail as well. But um, so here it's a short one: five new records. That's what I got this week. Uh, First one is something that I've been uh, after for quite a while. Um, this is a library uh, soundtrack album called Happy Pastimes on Themes, a British label. And this uh, apparently was uh, um, bought or sent to a German production company, as you can see on this sticker here. Um, library soundtracks, for those who don't know, are records that were produced uh, not for commercial use but to be sent to producers so that they could use it as background music. Library soundtracks basically means background music. This one is from... Um, uh, there's usually so little information, I believe. Uh, this probably is from the very early 80s, like, or 79, 80, 81, I would say. At, best. Um, the, I've been after this one because of a track from Alan Parker who also did uh, on the theme as well this wonderful uh, Spirit of Soul album with the singer which is um, which I believe uh, uh, Sherva showed recently. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a classic. It's, uh, it's an absolutely stunner. And on this one there's a few tracks by different people and one from Alan Parker in two versions, and that's the one I've been after. I've, I have no idea if uh, the rest uh, will be of interest to me. Um, I got it for quite cheap because there's some marking on the um, on the cover and the sticker in the back, and also the record is a bit dusty. But I haven't played it yet. I've just cleaned it, so let's see. But the track I'm after is called "The Free Life," and there's two versions: "Free Life A." And this is what we're going to listen to. Absolutely lovely. This is the kind of um, pastoral pop, folk, frog that I fully expect from the UK. This is the music that I feel uh, is the essence of uh, anything light from British music. Of course, there's lots of dark music from the UK that I love, but if it's gonna be light, it's gonna be like that. A very like you can't hear it but there's a very very unique stereo like there's like the instruments are panned very radically this is lovely so the next version is gonna be probably very similar as it has the same description oh I need to clean this better Or more electronic, medium tempo relaxed melodic synthesizer lead, which is the same description as the previous version without the syn plus the synthes synthesizer lead. Alan Parker did many many records under many different names. I don't believe he did any anything about soundtrack, uh, library soundtracks, or maybe sessions played for different. Uh, as a recording artist for um, for recording the sessions, um, 
but there's lots of stuff from him. Not not everything is good, but um, when it's good, it's pretty unique. Yeah, I really really dig this. Well, for something completely different, a record I got in the mail uh, that I'm a little bit. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it. It's a record I ordered um, in December. Uh, it's like 51 copies of it. There's two editions, one of 51 and another one of 51. Very nice handmade <laughs> artwork. This is, um, uh, yeah. Um, Num hand numbered. This is Son, and um, the Russian guy, C O H, it's pronounced not Ko, but uh, Son, apparently. And he's, it's his latest album. It has something to do with the moon solstice. Um, there's, the other edition is much more expensive, it's got like a, a, an amulet, like a piece of jewelry and but um, well, you had to be quick to get this <laughs> the issue is that like uh, on the side of the label you know, which is a Swiss label uh, it's a band camp and there was like six tracks and the one that was the deciding factor for me to purchase this <laughs> has been left out of the vinyl it's uh, a track with an Arabic feeling, uh, Middle East, whatever, sorry for <laughs> And um, the rest is pretty nice. Um, it's the first time I listened to the vinyl and it's quite good pressing. So COH Son is a Russian guy who actually lives in Stockholm, uh, very close by to here, or so I hear. And um, in the... He's been one of the earliest noise electronic artists from Russia um, to be successful in the West. Um, and um, he also had a very cool collaboration with Peter Christofferson from Coil under the name of Soysung, um, which used a lot of auto tuning in a very creative way. Um, this one, I don't know yet, uh, we'll see how it sinks in, but um, I've been partial to his music, I've got a few, a few records of his that I really like, a handful actually, like, and um, most of his stuff usually I really enjoy and then I tire of it a bit too quickly, um, so I'm very selective with his stuff, but this one I thought, oh, there's this track I really, really like. So I hope I will warm up to the rest, which uh, seems very likely. He was affiliated or at one point with the Alvanoto Raster Noton uh, crowd in Berlin. I believe they're even from Berlin, I'm not sure now. Um, anyways, this is pretty good. I haven't been able to listen to my records um, this week yet because uh, first I was working all the time and I was tired but also because there was so much snow it was pretty um, difficult to access to this little studio, my listening studio which is outside uh, the main house and, but now the snow is melting so I could do, I could, uh, I could shovel a path to the studio fairly easily and it's not too cold anymore, it's fine don't see any steam coming out of my mouth. So the theme soundtrack, um, I don't know any of the other names by the way. David Lindup, Martin Slevin, Alan Tu, Jim Lawless, Johnny Pearson. Johnny Pearson I know, he's, he's done a few library soundtracks for KPM, if I remember correctly. Not my favorite ones. <laughs> to, be, 
<laughs> to be polite. Uh, anyways, I'll be digging this later. This is lovely. I've been after for uh, quite some time. It's not a rare one at all. Uh, it's just that I, it's a cheap one and I wanted to find it in the wild in order to pay what you're supposed to pay, not pay additional um, shipping costs. It's a record from a guy I don't really like and it's an album track but they put it on the B-side of a single so I got it on 45 RPM here, so very loud pressing for a short track. he's using um, this basically an ambient track and some vocals coming in later on I think he's closing uh, his album called So uh, where there's no track I love apart no like no tracks I even like on it apart from this one which is pretty fantastic Especially if you play it at the right speed. Synthesizer work. it for a buck.
Another record I've been after for quite some time. Suniki. Mr. Lager. It's a single actually, there's only like two tracks. It's like late 2000s dubstep. The record has some uh, nasty scratch, so when I showed it to the guy, I got the record for free. So I will still look for better copy to this, but until then, it's very nice. This is British dubstep. I know that in the US, uh, the concept of dubstep has shifted towards something very different and atrocious, <laughs> might I add. psychedelic, at least in my view. Also lots of syncopation, which is what brings the psychedelic aspect. from 1958 still pretty good shape uh, it's a Deca UK pressing it's the first pressing mono from 1958 um, and it's um, various bands and musicians from South Africa with quite an emphasis on, um, on the wind instruments on the flute so it's basically jazz Pop jazz, uh, but uh, with lots of flute, which I really, really appreciate. It's um, it's a lot of song from this style called uh, Quella. Um, so lots of original tunes, and there's a cover of uh, like a there's a Duke Ellington track, or at least Rock and Rhythm, which is was made famous by Duke Ellington. I'm, I'm, yeah, he probably wrote it. Or co-wrote it, certainly. As was the case of most of his speeches and stuff. Yeah, this kind of challenge is... Um, the genre, the style thing. Is it pop, jazz, rhythm and blues? That's pretty good. So I don't really know the story, I don't know at all the story behind this record, why it was released in the UK. Uh, this was sold in Sweden by the way, because I see the sticker from the from the, um, the 
shop where it was sold, which was quite usual for the time, in the 50s. This is for Madame Sin. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if this was a record pretty common in the UK that most diggers there know about and uh, have either passed <laughs> over or um, love. But I've never heard anybody really discuss this one. Quella, 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 Quella. <laughs> kind of singing. Anyways, it was just a little short video about the, the most recent purchases, um, which I was quite happy with. Pretty soon we might do um, best of 2020. As uh, I feel, I'm getting closer to to getting a handle of what actually was released and what happened uh, music-wise in different styles. Uh, it takes some time. I never get why people do these these tops uh, in December when the the year isn't even over. In my top, there is actually one record that I believe was released on December 30. So, <laughs> um, but even though you need some time to live with your records to know if they're actually are that good, if the music holds up. And um, this is already way too short to do it right now, like barely two months after the end of the year. I've been working quite a lot the past few days, few weeks, on crash testing everything. There's a few records in the mail. But um, yeah, that should be fun. Until then, toodle.